Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. I know yesterday's title on our broadcast about Putin and uh, the mark of the beast, no doubt that has gotten a lot of people's attention there. Uh, I, I mentioned in there about it, but I didn't really go that deep into it. And tonight I wanted to take just a, a little bit of your time and share with you a little bit deeper thoughts on this. Uh, more, it, it, we are looking a little bit of news. I'm going to share with you some clips here in just a moment here on your screen uh, for you to look at on troop movements, both on the Ukraine side, Kiev side, Petro Poroshenko sending down grad launchers uh, to Crimea's northern border. And that's what you're seeing right now on your screen. Take a look at this. This was done, uh, just it came out here, posted on August the 29th, uh, and these are grad launchers that are being that are going down to Crimea. And a private individual on Twitter posted this video footage here. Now, I did not. <laughs> На Крым по ходу. На море, да, пацаны поехали. Кацапи у Хаймана. I did notice one thing I thought was interesting, and that is now they're covering uh, the rocket launcher's system on top of the trucks. That way, just kind of from the air, it looks like a covered truck. They're doing that because they don't want Russia seeing what they're doing, or at least try to escape the attention of Russia, like covered trucks going down to Crimea. Uh, but nonetheless, there's too many people that catch videos today, and so it kind of exposes exactly what's going on. And then another thing that was interesting, and that is Russia actually <coughs> released a video that they made themselves, very professionally put together, kind of a quick thing, but it is professionally, so I don't know when this was taking place. Uh, but they released this video here that you're seeing on your screen now. Russia loading uh, the ship there off the off the western coast of Russia there that goes over to Crimea and it is stated in there that this is where all this military equipment is going you see the only thing they do have covered by the way are the tanks and I do believe that that is their new tanks that they have that they came out with that there's been a lot of secrecy about them because of the capabilities and they don't want the West to know what what their capabilities are but at any rate there, you see every type of military hardware you can imagine going on there. Everything from tankers and tanks uh, to, to trucks of all sorts, shapes and sizes, but all of them obviously military. And Russia sending an enormous amount of equipment. They show daytime, nighttime loading footage, everything. And then you have to ask yourself the question, why would Russia be willing to show the world what they're doing as far as bringing in all this military equipment? And I believe I know the answer to that. I believe that what Russia was doing is Russia is doing exactly what Putin spoke about in the documentary, The Way Crimea, The Way Home. If you ever see that documentary, and I'll try to remember to post the link here in the subject line below, but in that documentary, when the United States NATO, the allies there, come into the Black Sea doing a military drill. Putin stated it was no drill. They were coming, as in 2014, they were coming to try to take Crimea back, hoping that Russia had not got a foothold in the country as of yet, and they were going to help Petro Poroshenko because, of course, it was already the West that helped topple uh, the government, and 
you know, Yanukovych was totally, uh, you know, brought down by, by uh, a coup that happened in his own country. And of course, they always say that Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, no, Russia came in because Petro Poroshenko needed Russia to come in to save his own life. So yes, and not only that, Russia's military has always been stationed in Crimea. It's been under Russian control for over 200 years. So what do you mean? Russia invaded Ukraine? Russia's always been there. Okay, the collapse of the Soviet Union, it became a democratic state. They elected the, the last president that was elected, truly elected by the people, was uh, goodness, goodness. I can't even say it. <laughs> was Yanukovych. And, you know, since then, Petro Poroshenko was, in Barack Obama's own words, President Obama states that he was installed by the U.S. government. So, no, he's not an elected official. He's an installed puppet of the West. All right. Now, I, I say these things to try to get you going to, to understand what's going on. Now, backing up again, though, I, I mentioned that in the documentary Crimea the Way Home, Putin speaks about the NATO allies and their ships coming into the Baltic Sea, and he says it was not a drill. So Russia, according to Putin, he put his, uh, it was either the S-300s or the S-400 missile systems, which are a supersonic missile system, out in the wide open view for the satellites to, to be able to pick it up, that Russia was there and that Russia was intending on fighting for Crimea, if that's what it comes down to. And that's what caused the United States to back down. I think that Russia once again is doing the same thing by permitting this video that you're seeing once again on your screen here, showing all the different military hardware headed over to Crimea. It doesn't look like to me that a country that would be willing to show the world video footage of what they're sending to, Ukraine, to Crimea that they are there to, to launch a preemptive strike on Ukraine. It clearly is evident, as it was in his documentary, Crimea the Way Home, that Putin is trying to tell the world that, look, I'm putting this here. I will fight for Crimea. I will fight for the Russian people that live here, and I will fight for the fact that, that we have sovereignty over this territory for over 200 years. It has always been under Russian control, and it will remain this way. And in, in another respect, you have to say, he has a right to. They want to say, well, he annexed Crimea. Well, the President Yanukovych, who he rescued, no doubt, if he gives him permission to be there, then he has every bit of the permission to be there if he wants it then. All right, now, that beside, that's beside the point. Let's, let's back up just for a moment here. I mentioned that Putin was fighting this mark of the beast. What do I mean by that? I want to share with you something I think that will really make you think about this as a whole. Let's take a look over here and, um, in Revelation chapter 13. This is from the Christian Bible. Called, uh, it's called the New Testament. And it states right here, if you look at verse 11 down, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had... Two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused it the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that, that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power. Here's the important part. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's concerning to me, guys. Maybe this is exactly why we are seeing all the issues that are going that is going on in Syria, Ukraine, uh, 
all different parts of the world right now, even South America, the unrest that is happening there, is it because these people, nations, see, would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, I realize that, okay, yes, this may still have a lot to do with a future issue. I'm not saying it doesn't. But are we looking at the beginning of it? Watch what else it says. And he caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. So you don't, not, not necessarily everybody's going to have that mark then, because they also have, could have the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, where it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and six. And I still believe and hold to that view. In the Latin um, language, written above the Pope is vicarious filii dilii. And if you take that and take the Roman numerals out of that, that word that actually means instead of the Son of God, like a replacement of, of Jesus or Yeshua that you might call it, call him. See, what is that? That is 666. Look it up. There's many people that have noticed this as well before. And one other one I want to share with you and looking at this from a prophetic standpoint, and that's over in Revelation 17. Another one that caught my attention. Verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones, pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Remember the Pope doing his last supper there in the upper room in 2014 in Jerusalem there over King David's tomb wearing his triple crown and having that golden cup in his hand and upon her forehead was the name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth now watch this and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You know, why would John even be wondering to begin with? I think he wonders more so because this is a picture of the church. The Roman Catholic Church, and yet she's drunken with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. Willing to allow her own to die as well in the Middle East there. And believe me, you can, you can see both sides. Notice how it says, she's drunken with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. And that's kind of interesting. Isn't it? The sanctified ones and the martyrs of Jesus. Look at all the Coptic Christians they've killed. Look at that group of men. They marched down that beach. ISIS did. And they behead them. She's, remember, she's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The creator of the Muslim faith, according to Cardinal B, is a Roman Catholic church. And that was revealed by uh, Alberta Rivera when he was alive. She created that religion. As well as, now we see the Pope of Rome, what is it, in October, I believe it is. He's going there to uh, Sweden. It's either Sweden or Norway, I believe it's Sweden. And holding the reunification meeting there with the Lutherans. They're coming back home to their mother church. In America, they've already done it. But it's a big deal right now because it's the anniversary coming up and he's going to be there. All the daughters are coming home. The evangelicals, Kenneth Copeland, his group, all joined back in. But Putin's not being such a good boy, is he? Putin has been fighting, whether he knows it or not, he is fighting the mark of the beast. Remember, it said both rich 
are, uh, are poor and great. If they didn't receive the mark, they'd be killed. And this is why we see a fight against Russia. That Roman influence is going to dominate this earth. And if whoever doesn't go along with it, they're going to kill them. Both poor and great. Doesn't matter who you are. And this is why NATO will fight the battle to the end. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Avalain Shalom, but there is no peace. Good evening.